Hi, this time I wanted to share a somewhat funny story, perhaps entertaining story. It's about my many years back when I was playing Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. It's about three players that I found it quite funny how perhaps they were not very self-aware of how they were playing their characters in the game world, how those characters were quite representative of their selves in real life, uh, but also the dynamics that existed between the three of them. Let's call this the story the the story of the three stooges, because yes, they were quite the, the bunch. Okay. Several years back, just before before high school, uh, a bit before high school, I was like, how many years? Like 15, 14, 15. No. Well, let's say my early teens. So I was looking for a group because my Ravenloft group had exploded, had been dissolved thanks to the Christian panic. You know, the saying that the Dungeons and Dragons game was going to turn you into a Satanist. It's always a war between cults. All religions are trying to obtain power over their ship. So Yes, that group was destroyed. The parents wouldn't allow the the players to to play in my game because they thought it was like a satanic cult. So I was looking for other people to play with. And I turned to the more unlikely individuals. I think you could say that they weren't too bad when compared to other options, but they were quite the, the characters. Even in real life, they had their, their quirks, so to speak. So let, let me talk about <laughs> let me talk a bit about them. <clears throat> okay, the first one, he was like the the leader of the bunch. There were three players. I mentioned three people, and he was a very almost albino type of individual. He had like incredibly white skin, but almost yes, like the whitest that you, that you can imagine. His eyes were very clear green and he had black hair. So he had a certain nickname in Spanish. I guess we could call him in English. Let's call him Milky, like milk, Milky because of the color of his skin. He was a very strange individual because he was like the, the leader, like I mentioned, of the two others. But at the same time, I don't know, he had a very strange uh, way of interacting with me. Sometimes he was a, a very, how would you say, like nice, cool, very friendly. But other times he was extremely hostile and I never understood why. As I was, was thinking about this story, I, I think I had some guesses to, as to why he was like that. Perhaps this is related to when I met him in college because we... Uh, lost contact for a few years and later on we met back in college. You may remember him from another story. I don't remember the video where I talked about him, but in that story I talked about a guy that he had his girlfriend and we were hanging out and uh, throughout college it turns out that the his girlfriend had a crush on me. But yes, and, and to be perfectly honest, she was bad news. She wasn't compatible with him. You may remember from that story that I told you that at first she disliked me quite a bit and later on she told me that it was because uh, she had this idea that I was like a combination of jock and preppy and she disliked that sort of those stereotypes. But then she said, oh, but you're just like a big dork. So I guess she was like into big dorks. Mm. So yes, maybe that, that's what got me thinking. Perhaps there was like he, a girlfriend that he had or an, a girl that he was interested in, sorry, interested in, and maybe she had like a, a small crush on me. Maybe that's why he was sometimes hostile towards me. But it makes no sense. I, I mean, I have no control over, not like I'm really attractive or whatever, but if you, someone has a crush on you, 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 you can't tell the, the person, stop having a crush on me, no? So, but like I said, this girl was bad news. Later on, she became a single mom. She was uh, very prone to sleeping around. 
So yes, I, I think it was uh, it was not worth it to put that bridge between us, that just that gap that is uh, between Milky and me, because she was not worth it. I don't understand. Okay, but like I said, he was like the leader of the bunch, and you'll see how this plays out later on in, in when they started to play tabletop RPGs. The other character in the group, he, let's call him, well, one of my other friends gave him this nickname, but he never told him that nickname, called him like that in, to his face. He said he, he should be called Captain Morgan because he had one leg shorter than the other. I know that's pretty dark, don't you think? But wait until you know about this guy. You will see, maybe some of you are thinking, oh, that's terrible, right? Okay, so let's call him the Captain. So the captain, even though he had that um, leg shorter than the other, and so they call him, my friend called him like that because he was limping like a pirate, but he was always, let's call him a bit of a scoundrel. If you imagine someone, the more negative stereotype of the scoundrel, he was kind of like that. He was always hanging around in taverns and clubs and... There were some pretty shady joints. And he even used to tell me, like, give me advice on how to triumph with, with the ladies. He was like, okay, listen to me, Abraham. In order to triumph with the ladies, you need to find a really ugly girl and just sleep with her, have sex with her. And then you just use her for a while. You discard her and, you, and you're going to build this reputation. And then you can get another, a better looking girl. And so you start to climb the ladder, you start to, to date uh, ugly women and you start to date prettier and prettier women. You use them like like steps to, uh, to get up the ladder. So quite terrible, as you can see. Maybe it has to do with his, um, like I said, the shorter leg. Maybe he felt like an uh, inferiority complex. So he was trying to prove, uh, prove that he was worth more than others, than other men by uh, sleeping around and all of that. But he, later on, he ended up with a certain condition down there, if you know what I mean. Okay. And so, yes, but the thing is that he pretty much was the representation of a modern rogue, if you get what I mean. And because he had that, like I said, the, the leg thing, he was kind of like a pirate. So I think the moniker of Captain Morgan was perfect for him. Now, the other guy, this is also very interesting. Uh, case let's call him g so g was somewhat of a burly guy not particularly tall but you see the guy and he looks a bit like a bull you know he's a very uh, thick neck uh, quite yes uh, strong not really really strong but uh, you could say that he wasn't exactly weak and the thing about him is for whatever reason uh, Mm. he kind of like wanted us to fight all the time I back then before I got into back into contact with my more uh, masculine part because you know how mainstream education tries to pretty much yes they try to destroy men to be pl quite honest they try to make you as weak as effeminate as possible but like I said back then I was under that dogma and doctrine it also didn't help that it was a, a jesuit school so he was always trying to pick a fight with me for whatever reason maybe he thought that he was like i said going to get street cred or whatever but i was always like trying to avoid things you can imagine the uh, like i had a very weak character when it comes to confrontations i, I don't want any trouble i don't want to, to fight i don't want us to end up uh, yes, in trouble, etc. So he, he was always, sometimes he actually like tried to uh, give me like those, how would you say, just like a few shops or uh, trying to punch me a little, but without actually starting the fight, just to see if I could fight back. But well, suffice to say, he was always trying to get me into a conflict with him. But something very funny happened later on. We had this typical, you know, like this uh, religious retreats, when you go to some sort of like religion camp where they further indoctrinate you. And you had like these games that, oh, you need to run around. Uh, uh, you um, 
I don't remember the exact ga game, but we were in a circle and there was this moment where someone was running and they would tap you. Ah, yes. Someone was running around the circle. This time it was G. And then he tapped my, my shoulder. So I had to run and I actually had to win the, the it's kind of like a race running around the circle. I had to get back to my spot. Otherwise, there was going to be like a penalty. So the reason why G did this is what because he was planning to uh, bump me. He was going to take me down as we were running. But in my early teenage years, th there was this moment uh, where I got uh, taken down uh, during a, like a street football match. And from that moment on, I don't know what happened to my body, but I developed this really good sense on how to avoid getting taken down. Just to give you an example, I don't think, no, mm -mm. I haven't been taken down in martial arts, in training, whatever, in real life confrontations. I've never been taken down since then as, as a takedown move, you know, like in mar mixed martial arts, call it a talent. So. We were running and then he went for his move. He was going to shoulder barge me, uh, take me down. But like I said, my body reacted quite naturally. I leaned forward at the same time and I kind of got like my, uh, how, the ankle behind his ankle. I, I don't remember the exact movement that I did almost by instinct. And I took him down spe spectacularly. He ended up uh, a bit hurt because he fell down, almost hit the back of his head. So after that, like with many people that are very, they're not very high quality people, I would say, they start to respect you because you proved like you beat them in their own game. But like I said, there was no need for that. I don't go figure, right? <laughs> But later on, like I said, he kind of respected me a bit, a little bit. And it was uh, funny because later on, back in college, we met again because he went to, we, we all went to the same college and I was talking to him and suddenly he told me like, hey, I know you have like a, a reputation that uh, you uh, are very violent when you uh, in confrontations. He said, I don't like that. But that's funny, right? Because he was trying, always trying to get me into a fight and then he was like, fighting is bad. <laughs> so only when he was like, he had like the aggressive advantage, then it was fine. That makes no sense. But okay, those are the three people that I am talking about. And I was looking for a group. I, I decided to, to play as, as a player, uh, to try out a game that was supposedly organized by actual role players, uh, people who actually knew how to play a tabletop role playing game. We, was, we were going to play, it was Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. W what a horrible game. They had this, it, it felt like you, you were in, in school because you need, needed to say something like, in character, and you then you sp spoke what you needed to say as your character or whatever you wanted to do. And then if you wanted to say something else like uh, making your roles or that, uh, even describing your actions, that's, that's no, nonsensical. If you were describing your actions, you had to raise your hand and you would say, out of character. So it felt like, yes, yeah, like school. It was ridiculous. And so that didn't last too long. So I thought, I really want to play tabletop role-playing games. I guess I'll invite these three guys. Yes, it's terrible. I, I, now that I am more experienced, I highly recommend that you do not play with, uh, you, that you look for the best players available. It's worth the wait. So we started to play, we started to create the characters in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, second edition. And here's the funny thing. Milky, he was like the leader of the group, as I had told you, he's, he was like the brains. The other two always obeyed him. They were like the henchmen. So the funny thing is that he created a wizard. And the G guy that I told you, he created like the br um, gruntiest, um, just like the stereotype of the dumb fighter, which fits perfectly with his real life persona. And then the captain created a pirate character. And like I said, he didn't know that uh, some people called him Captain Morgan, 
but he created a pirate, a literal pirate, maybe because of his shorter leg, but it just f felt so funny that they were, they all fit into their natural, they were basically role-playing their fantasy versions, the fantasy versions of themselves in the game. And yes, everything proceeded as I would have expected. The fighter G was always trying to pick fights with everyone. Every non-player character, he was always trying to pick a fight with them. Milky was always trying to like to... He was like the boss. The, he was actually the best role player in the group. But he was always directing the both of them. It felt like the typical case, you know, like the guy and his two lackeys. And he was, you, G, move over there and do this. Uh, oh, uh, captain, go and do this. And, and they were obeying him constantly. And the captain was always trying to pick up girls, was always w w going to the tavern. And he was always like, I'm going to get drunk. So it was uh, quite hilarious. I got them through the first adventure in the introduction to Advanced Dungeons and Dragons box set. It was pretty fun. It was actually pretty fun. But especially because I was like, I couldn't help myself. I almost laughed out loud because of how accurate their stereotypes were being represented in the game. Mm, sadly, later on, because they were constantly going to the bar and clubbing and all of that, and they lost interest in the game. They weren't too much into fantasy. One, uh, no, just one of them. The captain, also, his family was quite religious. They also heard about Dungeons and Dragons and they were like, maybe you should st stop playing that Satanist game, which is nonsensical because... Th so they were okay with him sleeping around with all of these women that he considered ugly so they could serve as stepping stones to get better women. And later on, he ended up with his um, condition down there. So, yes, I just wanted to, to share that story. It's, it's not exactly funny, perhaps just like bizarre. Maybe it was interesting. Mm, I would love to know about your own experiences. If you have like some bizarre RPG stories to tell, please let me know in the comment section or make a video response or whatever. But yes, the, the thing about this is that despite all of that, I still had a lot of fun. That's why I say that. Uh, you shouldn't look at tabletop RPGs as if, oh, if it doesn't last an entire campaign, then it's worthless. I am of the opinion that campaigns are amazing, the best thing that you can experience in a tabletop RPG, but those uh, short, shorter campaigns or, or even a single adventure, because I got them uh, through that ad adventure and the Haunted House adventure in that box, box set as well, the game got interrupted before they went into the third adventure. The ah, it has, I don't remember the name of the mountain. It was like a mm, weaker version of Under Mountain. Luckily, after that group, I also met another player and we actually uh, ended up playing a one-on-one -on -one campaign after that. So it served like a bit like a bridge before I got into uh, playing with other people, um, a, lar a bit larger group. So I hope you found this story perhaps entertaining, hopefully a bit funny. It's just, yes, it's, it's very funny when I think back at that moment that they were pretty much playing themselves in the game. Yeah. <laughs> well, once again, thank you for watching my videos and uh, thank you for your likes and your comments. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you and see you later.